all these movies and shows about vampires and I have never seen a pregnant vampire. I guess it's true what they say. Vampires have to have permission to come in. All right, we are back with another Drive Across 65. Uh, season one, episode 21. Took last week off. Uh, we had some scheduling conflicts. Um, starting a new show. That's exciting. We'll talk about that. Um, also, just didn't love the board. Um, there were a couple plays here and there that I liked. Uh, we'll talk about those. Uh, but nothing uh, that could push uh, the show to be started or the show to be created um, and to justify spending anybody's time. I could have given... 10 or 15 maybes, uh, a couple honorable mentions, and then one or two plays. Nobody's here for that. Nobody wants to hear that. Um, we'll talk about the plays that we did drop. So the uh, Pineapple Parlay, um, Alabama got walk off Phil Goad, um, which is weird for Alabama, man. You would think that they would always have the top tier at every position, or at least top five. And for the for the kid to miss the Phil Goad, obviously Tennessee, uh, gets the ball back with zero seconds left and still manages to get down the field. Uh, they scored, walk off field go, misses the pineapple parlay. Uh, that whole weekend, the whole Saturday slate felt really, really trappy to me. Uh, we talked about Michigan um, and Penn State, how that line was seven. Uh, Alabama, um, Tennessee, that line was seven. All the money was on the plus seven. Uh, on Penn State and on uh, Tennessee. Uh, so if you took those two bets, um, you pushed. And uh, the sportsbook did exactly what it was designed to do, was to collect the juice. Uh, shout out to Kentucky. They were also part of the Pineapple Parlay. Uh, not only did they cover, but they won straight up. Um, and then Sunday, um, had one play, Jags. Um, blew another double-digit first-half lead. Uh, this team, man, is stressing me out. Uh, I feel like they're doing what we thought they were going to do uh, as far as coming out scoring points. Their defense have been great, but they're just making mistakes, just giving the ball up. Um, Matt Ryan throwing a, a walk-off touchdown against me was not in the cards. Uh, nevertheless, um, let's go to this week. Um, I like the board a lot. There's a lot of games I like to talk about. Um Let's get right into it. We're going to dive right into it. So, um, Iowa team total under nine and a half. Uh, Syracuse plus 14 over Clemson. Uh, Wake minus 20 and a half over uh, Boston College. Kansas plus 10 against Baylor. Uh, Alabama minus 21. Alabama again. Alabama minus 21 against Mississippi State. Um, moving over to the NFL. Uh, Falcons plus six and a half over the Bengals. Um, against the Bengals, not over. Uh, Cowboys lines over 49. Um, Raiders minus six over the Texans. Uh, Seahawks plus six against the Chargers. And uh, we're going to sprinkle a couple games. Obviously, the honorable mentions will always come to play. Uh, but if you're here for the first 30 seconds of the episode just to see what the plays are, you've been riding, you've been winning, that's what they are. Uh, shout out to everybody who's going to stick around and listen as to the whys. <laughs> We will um, open it up with Iowa. Um, team total under with uh, Iowa sucks, obviously. Um, they can't score. They play all time snooze games. They had a nine to six game uh, this year that was awful. Um, with all of the craziness going on in um, college football right now, there has to be teams to establish their identity and I believe Ohio State's going to have that opportunity this weekend um I like the team total under I also like Iowa's defense so if this is a kind of a shutout situation a 24 nothing Ohio State 30 nothing Ohio State 31 3 Ohio State maybe situation I don't love Ohio State to cover the spread like I said Iowa sucks but they do have great defense um don't like Ohio State to cover. I do like their defense to shut Iowa down. I like Iowa's offense to shut Iowa down. Um, team total under nine and a half. Um, 
Syracuse plus 14 over Clemson. We had talked about this in the past, uh, maybe two episodes ago. Um, Clemson has just been on the tear. They've been covering. We've been betting against them. They've been blowing us up. Uh, I believe this is the, the last opportunity we have to pull the Clemson is not good card. Um, Syracuse, they're undefeated. They've had some sketchy wins. We had the walk off against uh, Purdue, uh, which uh, sometimes the ball just has to bounce your way to be undefeated. I mean, it is what it is. Um, Syracuse might not be um, a realistic undefeated team, but nevertheless, you're giving them 14 points against Clemson. Uh, they are traditionally, they traditionally play well against Clemson. We're going to ride with it. Um, Wake minus 20 and a half. Um, love Sam Hartman, man. Boston College had a lot of hype coming into the season. Uh, when I initially saw the line, I thought Boston College for sure. But you have to play the men in black game. You have to um, erase your memory. You have to consider the product on the field, not the hype around what could be. Um, Wake minus 20 and a half is just, it's such an easy play for me now. Now that uh, I had thought it through, uh, like I said, knee-jerk reaction was Boston College. Um, but you have to take what's on the field. Uh, Kansas plus 10 against Baylor. Um, so, obviously, Kansas is on a back of a quarterback, uh, Bean, who's been putting up numbers. He's been playing well. He's He's been playing his, his role as a back of quarterback really well. Um, they've been losing, but not by much. 10 seems like a lot of points for this Kansas team against Baylor. Um feel like it opened up around seven or eight and moved to 10. So uh, if you watch the money, obviously this is probably a bad play. Uh, but for me personally, I, I believe that uh, Kansas plus double digits is, uh, is a good bet. Alabama minus 21, um, obviously at home against Mississippi State. Um, so we had Kentucky in the Pineapple Parlay last week. We've been on them all year. They are obviously the home team for us. Um, watched the game last week, uh, obviously, and Mississippi State's not that good. I mean, they, they're putting up numbers. Uh, Will Rogers is getting his, more or less. But uh, all in all, they're not a great team. Uh, Alabama coming off that loss uh, to Tennessee. That hurt. That burnt us. But um, – they have to come out hot uh, back to the conversation we just had about establishing identity. Um, they have to just start rocking teams. They have to start blowing people out. <laughs> or they're going to lose um, their, their playoff or their playoff potential. If you're squeaking by teams like Texas um, against their backup, losing to Tennessee, um, you, you're not going to build your resume. They need to come out. They need a statement win. Um, I know their defense is definitely, definitely, definitely going to show up and brighten up. Uh, I watched the uh, clip of Nick Saban's interview where he said uh, Tennessee lined up on the goal line in the I formation and our defense didn't know what to do. Wow. I bet they know what to do this week after that. A um, couple honorable mentions. Uh, Pitt is getting two and a half against Louisville. Uh, we've talked about Louisville many times on this show. Uh, they are the Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde team. Um, insane that they're the favorites, even at home, against a Pitt team that uh, was supposed to be a really good team. Um, I don't have uh, a side on this, really. Like I said, it was an honorable mention. But to see Pitt getting points, I feel like is a public play. Um, Louisville's not good. Probably roll with Louisville minus two and a half. Um, I like Pitt, so it feels trappy. Do the right thing here. Go, um, go Louisville minus two and a half. Um, sorry about that. Uh, also, LSU. Um, I wrote down LSU trap game question mark. Um, that's such it's such a weird line. Uh, they're they're coming off the win. Um. Or they, yeah, they just beat Florida, who I feel like is a good team. Um, they're minus, minus one and a half, minus two and a half. Uh, I'll bring up the line here. Um, minus one and a half against Ole Miss. Ole Miss is not a top, t top ten team. Um, they're number seven in the country, but on paper they are. The, uh, in reality, they're not. 
Uh, Kentucky should have beat them, shot themselves in the foot uh, a lot at Ole Miss. Um, had that game, uh, been in Lexington, had um, Will Levis not got hurt. I believe the result would have been different. Then we would have had to flip the script, and Kentucky would have been a top 10, top 8, top 5 team maybe, who knows, uh, undefeated, and they're not bad either. So uh, as much as I'm throwing salt at Ole Miss, I'm throwing salt at the record and at the uh, the, AIP, the AP poll and the, and the voters, man. Ole Miss is not a um, top 10 team. And I believe the line shows it too. LSU at home minus one and a half. Obviously, they're minus three out of the gate. So they're saying that Ole Miss is only a one and a half point better team than um, Ole Miss. Doesn't make sense to me. None of it makes sense. Um, the gambler in me is telling me to go with LSU. Uh, it looks trappy. It feels trappy. It is an honorable mention. It is not uh, going to be a play. Uh, Falcons plus six and a half against the Bengals. Um, so hand up. I was very wrong about the Atlanta Falcons this year. Um, they're, they're spunky, man. They're a tough team. Um, I like what they've been doing. Arthur Smith has been, uh, absolutely, uh, in control of his team, of his clubhouse, of his, of his program. Uh, Marcus Mariota has been killing it. Um, Falcons, are, Falcons have been playing good. The Bengals are about exactly what we thought that they were. They um, came in second last year, Super Bowl runner-up, and took a step back this year. Um, Falcons coming off the big win against the Niners, 28-14. Um, the Bengals coming up, coming off a, a slip by against New Orleans. I think that's pretty much all you got to say. Um, really like the, the Falcons in that spot. Uh, Cowboys lines over 49. We finally get to bet a lines over that we are confident in. Uh, 49 sounds like a ton of points, but you all have to keep in mind. This might be my favorite play. You all have to keep in mind. The Lions are one of the highest scoring NFL teams this year. Erase the name. Don't think about the name. Just look at the points. Look at the averages. Look at the totals. The um, the Lions can score. Dak Prescott's back, uh, 49 over 49. Um, love that spot. Uh, Raiders minus six over Houston. Um, I believe, here, here's my theory. So I believe that the Texans, uh, Lovey Smith came out hot to wanted to show that they uh, weren't a team that was going to lay down. And um, they've proven that. But you still have to... Uh, acknowledge that you're you're playing for the future you're not playing for now so getting you four or five wins this year isn't going to uh, establish your future so i think this is around about the time they need to start laying down i think the upper management's gonna have that conversation with lubby he just punted from the 49 uh 49 yard line the other day on like a fourth and one i feel like the the proof is in the pudding there uh raiders minus six we've been on the raiders we're still on the raiders uh, not really sure what's going on with Devontae Adams. Um, they did cover for us uh, against the Chiefs. Should have won that game um, a couple weeks ago. Uh, Raiders minus six. Seahawks plus six. The hashtag drive across 65. Road dog of the week against the Chargers. Again, I apologize to the Falcons uh, to start the NFL um, segment. Hand up. Wrong about the Seahawks. Uh, Gino is doing his thing. Uh, the Chargers are not, the Chargers have a name, right? They have a good name. They are not who uh, they are built up to be. Um, they're four and two. Uh, they're, they're playing at home. Six points is a lot though against the Seahawks. I mean, the Seahawks team is funky just like the Falcons team is funky. You're giving the teams like that a lot of points, man. Um, Seahawks plus six, hashtag road dog of the week. Uh, I love them in this spot. A um, couple honorable mentions. We have to mention that Debo, is, or uh, <laughs> not Debo, uh, Christian McCaffrey is joining Debo uh, in San Francisco. Um, that is going to be either the coolest, most dynamic offensive presence in the NFL, or it's going to be such a sad story. Come um, 
week 14, week 15, when everybody's saying what the Niners could have been uh, had CMC stayed healthy. Uh, but nevertheless, they're giving Jimmy G some more options, some help. Maybe they'll do it. Maybe they. Maybe that's what they needed. Um, Kansas City's minus two on the road going to San Francisco uh, with the new addition. Obviously, it's going to take time for uh, Christian McCaffrey and Jimmy G and the rest of the offense to get on the same page. He has to learn the playbook, yada, yada, yada. I like Kansas City in this spot, uh, but I'm not going to bet against the Niners. Watch out for the public hype around this Niners team with CMC now. they People have to understand that it's a process. It's going to take time for him to establish himself uh, in that offense. I say that now. Watch him get a, a touchdown this week um, for the Niners. But nevertheless, we're fading it. Uh, I do like the Chiefs minus 10 in that spot, though. Um, Dolphins minus 7 was too many points. Can't bet with the Steelers, though. Um, I didn't love that spot. I thought the Patriots were going to be a, a higher favorite. I had them at about minus nine or minus seven and a half. So that's not a horrible spot. Uh, I had the Ravens at four. Uh, they're giving uh, the Browns six and a half, something to consider. Um, Titans, Colts, minus two and a half. I think that line is exactly where it should be. Um, and you got Jonathan Taylor. He's coming back this week, so watch out. Uh, maybe any time touchdown score uh, could be in the cards for him. Um, that's about it. We do have some UFC this weekend. I will post those in the daily pick. It's going to be early, early, early. Uh, so watch out about 10 a.m. We start posting the UFC daily picks. Uh, we are going to start a UFC based podcast, uh, and YouTube channel. Um, I have some guys that are just absolutely, um, I, I admire them so much. They're, they're, um, very well-rounded and educated in the, uh, UFC game. Uh, we've been betting with them. We've been crushing it. I uh, missed last week. Again, scheduling issue. I could have made a whole show around the information that they gave me about UFC and they demolished it. I was getting messages after messages. I'm 3-0 now, 4-0 now, 4-1. And and it's just, it's it was insane. These guys crush it. I said, I have to put these two guys together, put them in a room and record, man, and just let them rip. Um, so watch out for that. We're going to start that hopefully in the next week or two. Um, really excited about it. Uh, I'm going to learn a ton about UFC. I already understand all the betting strategy. Uh, but like I said, I'm going to put these two guys in the room. I'm going to host it and I'm going to let them talk and we're going to learn. We're going to win money. Um, it's going to be absolutely UFC based. It's not going to be wagering or betting based, but nevertheless, um, I'm a degenerate and I can't help it. So uh, we will have some plays for UFC coming up, and we will have a weekly uh, show devoted um, to UFC news, uh, recaps, uh, betting strategies, fights coming up. Uh, we already have some awesome segments in mind. We are so <laughs> we have a killer name in mind. I'm more I want I'm jealous of the name. Uh, it's going to be under the Drive Across 65 umbrella, uh, but it's going to be cooler than Drive Across 65. I'm, I'm admittedly jealous. Uh, that about wraps us up. Short show this week. Um, shout out to Elio. We've been telling him we are crushing it this week. Uh, I believe we're four and one, five and one. Telling him in the past six bets, uh, he's going insane right now. Uh, there's not a Hanes T-shirt safe in the uh, vicinity in the um, in his household. Uh, shout out to that. Shout out to every time you see me retweet or anything like that when it's concerning him, we are telling him and it is going on the record. Uh, I approve. Uh, that wraps us up, guys. Hashtag drive across 65. Good luck, everybody.